Welcome back to another little bit of Lisp. This time we're going to look at a rather interesting function called complement. And it's a bit of a bugger to try and explain what it is exactly in a very short sentence. So we're going to just look at a little use case. Let's say we have our odd function, which we can pass numbers and it will tell us whether, they, whether they're odd or not. So this one, zero is even, so it returns nil. And this one's odd, so it returns true. But we, it, let's say we didn't have a function uh, that told us whether something is even. Well, in that case, we can use complement. Now, I'm just going to go and define this as a variable over here. So I'm going to do def var and um, so our even is the complement of the function odd p. If I compile that, and we look at our even, and we can see that it is a function. It's some closure. We don't know what exactly is in it. But let's test it out. So let's bring up our little example. So we do odd of zero. And then we're going to fun call our even passing in zero. And it returns true. Now if we pass odd one, of course, it returns true because it's odd. And we fun call, whoops, fun call our even passing in one. And it returns nil. And it works for obviously for other numbers as well. So what is this? Complement is a function that takes a predicate, something that's going to return uh, true or false, in a generalized Boolean, which we've also covered in another video, and it's going to return the opposite. So whenever the original function returns true, it's going to return nil. Whenever it returns nil, com the complement is going to return true. And that's it. Now, why is this useful? It's useful because um, these guys are technically deprecated. Now, the standard, there hasn't been a new revision of the standard. The standard came out in 1990. Doesn't look like it's changing very fast. So while these guys are deprecated, it's not practically a problem. However, uh, when you have uh, find if and position if, you don't actually need find if not and position if not, because the function that you pass in, you can just run through complements. So let's say, I don't know. Let's let's make a little thing. Um, we'll say is jam. This thing um, goes checks if x is equal to the keyword jam. Great. And now we're going to go find if. Um, I'm going to find if the thing is jam. Uh, we're going to find it in L2. If you haven't seen the find and find if functions, I've got another video on those. It's worth checking them out. Um, we're going to use key to say that we want to check the second element. So we're going to be finding through this list of sublists, and we're going to look at the second element of each one. And we're going to return, if true, if it's jam. We're actually, we're going to turn the whole thing, this whole sublist here, if it's jam. So here we are. We get this sublist. Now, we want something that returns the first element that doesn't have jam in the second position. So what do we do? We say complement. And we see that it jumped over this one. It looked at this one and looked at the second element, extracted that, passed it to our function, which is jam will return true. So the complement of is jam is false. So it goes, OK, this isn't the one. And he goes to the next one. And it looks at this and he goes, oh, this isn't jam. OK, this is the result that we need. And that's it. That's complement. I must admit, it's not one I use very much. I find myself using find if not and position if not a lot more. And I think it's just because when I'm scanning through, my eyes hit that fast and I understand what's going on very quickly. It gives me the context for when I'm reading the rest of that line. But, you know, your mileage may vary and I'm probably just exercising a bit of bad style there. So there you go. A little bit of lisp with compliment. See you next time.